Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're talking news, specifically AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 series news, along with a discussion on price cuts for AMD's Zen 3 desktop CPUs. It's actually a really good time to buy a new CPU right now, and with this update to the Threadripper line, we're finally getting a refresh of the current leader for high-performance desktop workstations. There have been quite a few questions over where Zen 3 based Threadripper products have been hiding, especially given the first desktop CPUs using AMD's new architecture were released at the end of 2020. That's a long time to wait for a Threadripper update, but the simple reality comes down to two factors, supply constraints and competition. AMD's main focus for their big multi-die chips has been the server market. The demand for Epic Milan CPUs has been extraordinarily high, and one of AMD's key focuses has been improving their server market share. So the majority of CPUs that might become Threadripper parts have been going to servers since the launch of Milan almost exactly one year ago. And you can't really blame AMD for this, it's smart business sense for them, given you know a top-end 64-core Epic chip sells for over $7,000 US compared to just $4,000 for, say, a last-gen Threadripper 3990X. The other factor is competition. Intel simply doesn't really have the parts to compete with the existing Zen 2-based Threadripper lineup, let alone a Zen 3 model. The X-series of enthusiast HEDT parts has been stuck in the 10th gen with Cascade Lake since 2019, which itself wasn't that competitive upon launch, and since then, the only real alternatives in Intel's stack has been Ice Lake W, which launched to, I guess I'd have to say, little fanfare in mid-2021. Basically, we're not expecting a proper refresh of Intel's high-end workstation line until Sapphire Rapids launches later this year, and even then it's not clear if we'll get HEDT parts out of that particular line. So with AMD pumping out Epic chips and facing little competition, they've been able to sit on Threadripper 5000 for some time, but it's here now with the launch of the Threadripper Pro 5000 series based on Zen 3 architecture. This new lineup of products is basically exactly as you'd expect. Threadripper 5000 still uses the same chiplet and IO die design, with a large 14 nanometer IO die in the center, flanked by up to 8 CPU chiplets built on 7 nanometer. But instead of Zen 2 chiplets with two CCXs inside and a split L3 cache system, the shift up to Zen 3 gives us all the usual advantages, like a unified single CCX with all eight cores able to access the 32 megabytes of L3 with ease. We're still getting 128 lanes of PCIe 4.0 from the CPU, and given these are Threadripper Pro, all eight DDR4 channels are available for use. While the primary upgrade here is the shift from Zen 2 to Zen 3 and all the associated IPC benefits, Threadripper Pro 5000 CPUs are also clocked slightly higher in terms of boost frequency, 4.5 GHz versus 4.3 GHz previously. This applies to every Threadripper 5000 chip, so we're getting either a 200 or 300 MHz clock increase over the previous Gen 3000 series part. The 280 Watt TDP remains the same. Again, not too many surprises looking at the full product stack. AMD is offering everything from a 12-core chip in the Threadripper Pro 5945WX right up to a 64-core in the Threadripper Pro 5995WX, including a 24-core model which wasn't available in the previous generation. So this gives buyers options at every budget level. Now you might be wondering, well, why would AMD offer a 12 and 16 core Threadripper CPU when those core counts are already covered by the regular desktop Ryzen line with the Ryzen 9 5900X and 5950X? Well, there are some benefits for going Threadripper here instead, such as if you need significant amounts of memory bandwidth, but don't especially need high core counts. The 5945WX has 8-channel DDR4 instead of 2-channel like you get with the 5900X. The same applies to PCIe connectivity and any of the advanced pro-level features that Threadripper offers. Then there's also the upgrade angle. Getting a system with the 5945WX allows you to upgrade to a higher-end Threadripper part in the future on the same motherboard if your business and budget continues to grow. With all of that said, it's the 64 and 32 core models that will gather the most sales and interest here, which was also the case with prior generations. It never hurts to have options though, and the new inclusion of a 24 core part does balance out the lineup nicely. Unfortunately, AMD did not provide any direct comparisons between the Threadripper Pro 5000 series and the previous 3000 series, so we don't know how much of an upgrade we're getting gen on gen. With that said, reviews for Epic Milan server chips have shown impressive performance gains, thanks of course to Zen 3's IPC advantage.
Instead, AMD's performance data focuses exclusively on comparing Threadripper Pro 5000 to Intel's Xeon W3300 series, which are Ice Lake workstation CPUs. According to AMD, their new parts are faster than Intel's parts in many key workstation and productivity applications, whether we're looking at best versus best or products in a similar market segment. The disappointing aspect to these Threadripper Pro 5000 series CPUs is that they're not available for DIY system builders just yet. At this stage, they will be exclusive to OEM systems, in particular the Lenovo ThinkStation P620, which is the first system announced to use the 5000 series. There will be more OEM configurations coming soon, but this ThinkStation will launch in the coming month packed with Threadripper Pro 5000 chips. The Threadripper Pro 3000 series was also OEM only. If you wanted to build a Threadripper system, you had to get the non-Pro models, which cut the number of PCIe lanes and memory channels in half. However, it has been sort of possible to buy the Pro variants if you really want to, but you'll usually need to opt for, say, a third-party seller at places like Newegg, and then you'd have to also source an SWRX8 motherboard, which were also kind of OEM only. AMD, well, they haven't ruled out launching a Zen 3 Threadripper for the DIY market, but when I asked them about this, they said that this specific launch today was for OEM systems only. So we might see Threadripper 5000 later on, especially if Intel releases a new HEDT series based on Sapphire Rapids. At least for now, we know these Threadripper chips do actually exist. We're not in a perpetual state of rumors and leaks anymore. The other topic I wanted to talk about was Ryzen 5000 CPU price cuts, which have started appearing across major retailers in the last week, followed by a lot of news reports and so on. After speaking with AMD about this today, we confirmed that there has been no official change to what AMD calls the SEP, or Suggested Etailer Price. Basically, the MSRP for AM4 processors has not officially been reduced. However, that hasn't stopped retailers from adjusting AMD CPU prices to more closely align with current market conditions, where Intel CPUs are typically better value, especially in the mid and lower price tiers. These price drops could be part of unofficial price adjustments from AMD. It's not uncommon for discounts or sales to be accompanied by various agreements between retailers and manufacturers, but these deals aren't typically made official, so that allows them to then be adjusted or ended at any time. Doing this gives a bit more flexibility compared to a permanent price reduction. Here is the current state of these price reductions going on what Newegg is offering right now. The Ryzen 5 5600X has been dropped to $270 US from $300, which probably isn't enough of a reduction to keep up with the excellent Intel Core i5-12400. In our testing, the 12400 was just 6% slower when gaming compared to the 5600X, while it trades blows with AMD's 6 core part in productivity workloads. For this 5600X to be the clear recommendation here, it would need to be much closer to the 12400F's current asking price of just $200 US. The Ryzen 7 5800X has come down from $450 to just $350 US, which is quite a sizable price correction. But this makes sense given the 5800X was one of the least well-priced parts in AMD's lineup. This is probably to make room for the upcoming Ryzen 7 5800X 3D using AMD's 3D vCache technology, which should be coming to market soon. We don't have any pricing info on that part just yet, we don't actually know when it will launch either, but if we had to guess, it'll probably launch around the original price of the 5800X. This price adjustment was necessary when the 5800X is going up against Intel's Core i7-12700 series, including the 12700F and 12700KF, which can often be found for $350 US or less. Even at $350, the 5800X isn't a hugely competitive part given the 12700 was typically faster in our testing, let alone the 12700KF, especially for productivity workloads. But it's certainly a lot more competitive than what it was when it was priced over $400. Personally, I feel it still needs to come down in price a bit. At around $320, it would be a good buy and $300 would really be ideal. Then we get the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is currently sitting at $500 on Newegg, down from its $550 launch MSRP. This makes it about $100 more expensive than Intel's Core i7-12700K, but $100 cheaper than the Core i9-12900K. 
For gaming, it still makes the most sense to go with the 12700K here, given it performs very similarly, but is cheaper, or ideally you could go all the way down to the 12700F. But for productivity workloads, depending on the application, the 5900X can sit between Intel's unlocked Core i7 and Core i9 parts, so the pricing here isn't totally stupid, it's just not a must-buy at this price either. And then we see the Ryzen 9 5950X, which has fallen from $800 at launch to just over $600 today, which is a huge saving and clearly has been in response to the Core i9-12900K, which is basically the same price right now. But again, the 12900K is also typically a little bit faster, depending on what you're testing, of course. Not a bad price by any means for the 5950X, but also not the clear leader. Of course, when discussing these prices, the main focus has been on the CPUs themselves, and there are more considerations than just that, such as the motherboard prices and upgrade pathways. These price cuts are great news for existing AM4 owners that may be considering an upgrade to a Zen 3 CPU now or in the future, but if you're already in that ecosystem, you already own an AM4 motherboard, you probably wouldn't consider switching everything over to Intel 12th gen, which is why these price cuts aren't always putting AMD into the leading position. They're capitalizing on buyers who will only consider an AMD upgrade. But for new system builders, there could be even bigger price cuts in my opinion. AMD does have a small cost advantage when it comes to motherboards. X570 and B550 boards are usually slightly cheaper than Z690 and B550 boards respectively. But this doesn't always give AMD the platform cost advantage, especially when looking at parts like the 5600X versus 12400. There are a few rumors floating around that AMD might consider releasing new CPUs into the market to better combat Intel's budget 12th gen lineup. Things like the Ryzen 5 5500 and Ryzen 5 5600 have been discussed. Of course, these are just unconfirmed rumors though, so take them with a grain of salt, and honestly parts like the 5600 aren't strictly necessary. AMD could just drop the price of the 5600X to say $200, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Anyway, that's it for this brief news update on some of the latest AMD stuff that's going on at the moment. We've got the new Threadripper Pro 5000 series news, which we could just talk about from today. And also I did want to cover those price cuts on AMD parts as well, and the official news that AMD actually hasn't, well, officially lowered the price of these parts, even if they are cheaper in most regions. If you're interested in supporting the channel and the testing analysis and stuff that we do, we do have our float plan and Patreon accounts. Links to those are in the description. You'll get access to things like our Discord community, which has been a great place to discuss all of this news lately. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.